Welcome back to the Narrowband channel. Tonight, I'm going to review the 40 to 150 millimeter f2.8 from Olympus. I'm sorry, yes, I had to do that. I think that the, the lens shade on this lens is probably its most defining characteristic, at least as far as like its physicality goes. Now, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Okay, let's get the elephant out of the room. You know, it, I don't know, it's just so fun to play with, you know? It's, it almost keeps me from getting out to do photography. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, it's it's well engineered, and I know, like, making castings and stuff like that to, like, basically mass produce something like this, and the, the linear bearings that it has in here that it kind of rolls on, it's just cool, okay? You know, it's just, it, it will impress your friends. <laughs> okay, let's put it that way. So, okay, let me, let me take it off here because I'm just going to play with it. Now, this is kind of the actual heart of the lens, okay? This is, this is really the lens itself. The lens shade, it does make it look kind of big. And that's actually maybe the only minus that I have to say about the lens shade is that it, it's a little bit big. But I understand, you know, the mechanics necessary to make something like that, you know, you have to make it that big. There's no way to downsize it at all. And it's kind of the only lens shade that we've seen from Olympus that's like that. And this lens, this is an older lens, okay? This this came out pretty early in the mirrorless four-thirds system that Olympus has been using for a long time now. And it's kind of a, a mainstay type lens. You know, this is one of those lenses that kind of everybody should really have a lens like this. It's not very expensive, and it just has an incredibly versatile focal length range between 40 and 150 millimeters. And if you're used to thinking in 35 millimeters like I am, okay, because I grew up in the 35 millimeter film era, well, that's an 80 to 300 millimeter. And I know most of the companies out there, they make 80 to 200 millimeter lenses. I've used lenses like those before, and I'll tell you what, they're, they are so not useful, okay? It's just, it's not long enough, it's not wide enough, it's just, you know, this right here, this 40 to 150, I think it's a fantastic range. Really, all of the telephoto lenses that are kind of in this particular niche of the market should be this focal length range. All right, so let's talk about, you know, those optics because the, op the optics are important in the lens, especially when it comes to astrophotography. In astrophotography, it is the most grueling single test of any lens ever, and that's because stars, which make up the majority of our image, are insanely infinite, well, they are infinite points of light that are infinitely small. They only cover one pixel. And the only reason we see them as being larger or smaller is because one is brighter than the other. And basically it is the optical imperfections of the lens that cause that light to kind of spread out on the sensor and make some stars look better, bigger than others do, okay? That being said, a bad lens or a lens that's opened up all the way and shouldn't be will, you know, cause those stars to get really bloated fast. And, you know, other people who are interested in astrophotography, you know, will immediately call that out, right? And also people who aren't really interested in astrophotography, you know, they're, they're not really gonna know that, oh, okay, the stars are really bloated. That means that, you know, we've got poor optical choices here, or maybe there's stuff, other stuff that's going on that's wrong with the picture. But they're still gonna know that it's not crisp, okay? And, and then there's those spherical aberrations, okay? Because the spherical aberrations is basically what makes the stars on the outside edge of the picture look like comets, okay? They look bad, okay? And everyone, no matter if they're an advanced astrophotographer or if they've virtually never seen astrophotos before, if there's spherical aberrations in your image, anybody's gonna pick them out, okay? Because they're gonna look at the stars that are around the outside edge and say, that's not natural, because it should be round, not comet-shaped. Now this guy, okay, it does a phenomenal job at keeping spherical aberrations at bay, especially at 150 millimeters. Now the shorter end of this lens is not quite as perfect, okay? At 40 millimeters, I found that, yeah, I kinda had to stop down about F4, but that's really not kind of a big deal. With the shorter focal length, you just have a lot more things going for you as far as forgivingness when it comes to what you're using to track the stars with. So if you're guiding or if you are using like a, a star tracker, kind of like I do for a lot of my images, well then you're gonna be able to take a picture that's twice as long without having to worry about, you know, 
star trailing and stuff like that. Now, that being said, I really don't use this lens much, if at all, at 40 millimeters. And one of the reasons for that is because I already have a 45 millimeter f1.2, which is a fixed lens. And then I also have the 75 millimeter f1.8. So at 40 millimeters and 70 millimeters, which is the, the, the wide end in the middle of this lens, I really already have fixed lenses. And so those are the ones that I tend to use. So really, the only time I use this lens is at 150 millimeters. Now, if you don't have those kind of lenses in your in your bag, so to speak, really though, I mean, this thing's it's pretty great. You're not really going to gain a lot buying those fixed focal length lenses because I know the the 75 millimeter f 1.8. I kind of have to stop that down to f 2.8, and a lot of guys say to stop it down to f 4. Okay. I know the 45 millimeter f 1.2. That one you can kind of get away at f 2.5. But you know, for really, really good stars, you really need to stop it down to f2.8. So this guy, you know, if you didn't have those lens, you're gonna sacrifice one stop. Okay, not that big a deal. But you know, the optics in this thing, I think, are pretty fantastic. Now, <laughs> this guy, it actually came with the Olympus UV IR cut filter. Basically, it's you know, it's a UV lens protection filter, and I actually photographed quite a bit with it, and. It does a pretty good job. It actually kind of tempts me to buy the UV, you know, protector for a lot of my other lenses. However, I am going to say that as matched as this is for this lens, it's actually designed specifically for this lens. It still does degrade images a little bit. Okay, in daytime photography, it's completely not noticeable. You are not going to be able to tell the difference. In astrophotography though, there's a little bit of a difference, and so you might be able to find yourself kind of being able to open it up maybe a third of a stop more if you remove this, or, or if you don't have one at all, <laughs> if you don't buy one at all. But I do like the UV filter. It kind of just gives me a lot of, I don't know, security, let's put it that way. Uh, many times now, I found my son, my two-year-old son, with this camera, and you know, he's got his fingers all over the front. and. Yeah, it's just the UVR filter. Just clean it off. Not a big deal. So I like it. I think it's it's really an awesome lens for your kids. It's an awesome lens if you go to the zoo. It, really, this is this is actually I'm gonna hit the zoo here really quick. If you go to a zoo, this is the lens to take. I have longer lenses. I have the 100 to 400. I leave that one home. This is the one that I take. I love this lens for the zoo. Fantastic lens. It gets you wide, it gets you long, and usually I, I throw in the 1.4x teleconverter and I take that along with me. And so, let's talk about that 1.4x teleconverter. So if you were to buy this lens and this was to be your only telephoto lens that you ever wanted to buy, I would actually recommend the 1.4x teleconverter for this, even if you wanted to do astrophotography. Now, yes, I know you lose a stop, but here's the thing. Those things work by basically enlarging the image circle of the lens, which means portions of the lens that have spherical aberrations, especially at the wide end, are then out of frame. Okay, so I found that the 1.4x teleconverter does a great job even with stars. Okay, so if you kind of want to use this lens as your kind of catch me all lens for everything between your, your wide field photography and then when you get to your telescope, you know, which is usually a much longer focal length, this is a great filler for that. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I like it. And I, yes, I carry this lens with me a lot everywhere, in addition to my 100 to 400, which is a significantly bigger lens than this. But yes, this still, even though it has quite a bit of overlap with that other telephoto lens, I still use this lens a lot, especially for my kids. I love using this to take pictures of my kids. My wife loves this lens too. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a deer right there. This is what I love about coming out to the farm. All right, so one of the last things I want to talk about with the 40 to 150 is the focus ring. And then of course, there's just one complaint that, well, I should say, a feature that is kind of a newer thing that I wish this lens had. And that's that the the tripod plate, or foot I should say, it's on the bottom of the lens. I wish they had an Arca Swiss mount built into it. I know all of the newer lenses that Olympus has been coming out with, they've been incorporating that. And of course this is an older lens and 
the administration who was in charge of Olympus at the time when this lens was designed, they were actually uninterested and did not want to get into the video industry. And now that kind of everybody's going into the video industry, I can kind of foresee that if they do ever update this lens or any other Olympus lens that's in the telephoto range, it's going to have an Arca Swiss rail built into the foot. Now, of course, the last comment that I have is the focus ring. Now, on some of the other lenses that I've used in the past, the focus ring for, at least for astrophotography, I found them sometimes to be a little bit on the coarse side, but they were totally usable. The 40 to 150 here, I found that because it's a larger diameter, it seems to have plenty of steps as far as resolution goes and finding focus with a Batnoff mask on my cameras that don't have the starry sky autofocus has been plenty easy, okay? So I found that the, the resolution of that was pretty good. Should you buy the lens? Yeah, I think you should, okay? There are plenty of people that I've seen. This is the only long focal length that they've invested in and it kind of serves just about all of their needs. You can even get a 2X tall converter for this thing, and it allows you to reach all the way out to what is equivalent to a 600 millimeter lens. So yeah, this, this lens is it's kind of cool in that respect. It's an older lens. It's been around for a long time. It's kind of one of the earlier ones that Olympus did when they first jumped into the mirrorless four-thirds system. And I just wish that it had built-in optical image stabilization to complement the in-camera image stabilization. With this being a longer focal length, I think that that would be justified. Will Olympus add that someday? I don't really know. Who knows? There's actually rumors that they might come out with a lens that will complement this, but it is an f4. And I would be interested in kind of trying that one out too, although it would be a full stop slower at the long end, which is kind of what I use this lens for. But yeah, I really love this lens, and I hope you do too. And I hope you find this review is helpful in determining whether or not you need to get it or not.